Okay, I shall begin. Uh, I'm Tomasz Weinger from Global Productivity, and I'll talk about uh, custom widget teams. Uh, yeah, it's okay. So, uh, what are the custom widget uh, teams? Uh, first, I want to talk about a little bit uh, what the widgets are teamed in uh, LibreOffice. Uh, normally, they are teamed with like uh, this nat native widget framework and we have at, I at least think that it's uh, the the it's called like this I'm not sure <laughs> but uh, usually that the widgets are drawn uh, uh, for each backend like GTK or Qt or Windows uh, Mac uh, inside of the backends uh, of the VCR uh, so uh, then there is another one when you have no widget team. Uh, usually, this is like uh, if you don't like, uh, pass these parameters are no NVF equals one and run a LibreOffice. And then the widget uh, will be draw widgets will, will be drawn by whatever the uh, widgets have by default uh, drawing code. And uh, this was like very legacy. Uh, uh, before the native widget framework was introduced. Uh, and this is like uh, the widgets look like uh, they are from Windows 95 and uh, uh, so now we have like uh, Collabora Online and we, uh, we want to uh, uh, present uh, the, uh, on the browser, uh, LibreOffice. And uh, we made it so that the dialogues are like drawn from, uh, uh, taken directly uh, 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 from the LibreOffice core and drawn inside the browser itself. And because of that, we, uh, uh, the default look that is, uh, uh, there is like no widget team, so it doesn't have no uh, uh, native look, uh, and of course uh, because we cannot use the NVF uh, backend uh, in them at all. Uh, and of course uh, now, as uh, as you heard in the morning, like from Candy and uh, Tor, we also have the. Uh, online inside of the iOS app and uh, Android app uh, where we use the uh, dialogues and we want to team them like they are on the iOS or the Android itself. So this is a little bit screenshot uh, I made uh, how, how it looks like. Uh, uh, this is just uh, online and as you can see like for example, like uh, the tabbar and the, the every uh, widget here is not themed at all, and this is not native look, or it's not pleasant even for uh, uh, for for users to look at. Uh, so, to to make some additional uh, uh, team. Uh, um, we wanted, we, we created it for uh, for the iOS first, uh, and because we have to solve uh, one of the problems. Uh, so we have the iOS custom team, uh, which uh, we started to make for the Adfinis, uh, which sponsored this work, uh, and. The idea is something that is uh, suited to, for the iOS app. Uh, we can use it and should mimic the native look of the iOS and uh, uh, be attractive to the users. Uh, so the main uh, look was created by Pedro Silva, which, uh, which is our UI designer, uh, and uh, the. The uh, team is now currently at least located in this uh, part, uh, and if somebody wants to look at it. Uh, so, 
first I want to show how, how it all looks like uh, when, when it's steamed and uh, later I will go into details how we achieve this. So as you can see, like this is all uh, native, uh, uh, looks like a native iOS uh, application. Uh, this is uh, taken from uh, uh, online, uh, not uh, from the, the actual uh, uh, iOS app. So. Uh, uh, at least the upper border this is uh, don't uh, is just not there uh, but okay uh, and as you can see this uh, looks a little bit more native for the iOS uh, the environment itself yeah. so now uh, ho how how do we create this custom uh, widget uh, team says so first was uh, to create uh, an, uh, like this uh, NWF, like a native widget framework uh, has an interface and we just uh, created another instance uh, uh, of this uh, nat native widget framework, a little bit extended so that it can support uh, all of this because this was not uh, supported uh, from the beginning. Uh, and now, when we have this, we, the idea was that uh, we want some uh, definition files uh, uh, that uh, define the, the team itself. Yeah. So, um, one of the, the ideas also that uh, we want to have multiple widgets, team possible, but uh, it wasn't like the priority. Yeah. But this is something we want to to, op to feel open that later we can introduce our own uh, uh, widget team for online. Uh, and of course, currently, currently, uh, which widget team you want to, to use is pre pre pretty much hard-coded uh, and depends on the runtime. So if you have, if you detect that there is an iOS, we automatically pick the iOS team currently. But it's not something that is uh, necessary if we in the future want to uh, change this. So for the team definition, uh, uh, of course, uh, when, when, you are, when you want uh, uh, a team, uh, uh, draw a team, you want, don't want to do it for each team uh, and co inside code and uh, write it how, how it should look like. Should be something that also the designers itself can change and uh, um, doesn't need to uh, mess with the code itself. Uh, so this is why we created the def definition for the team, and the definition has uh, defines when to draw something, what what was the states and uh, at uh, which the widgets and uh, how to draw it itself. Yeah. So this is an example, just a part of uh, the the whole definition for the uh, the edit box itself. And uh, as you can see, like draw like edit box, and we have edit box part of the edit box. There are some widgets that has multiple parts, uh, and but it's not uh, uh, for the edit box. So the value is the entire. You define the head, and then you have different states like. For the edit box, uh, you can have like if, if it's enabled, if it's disabled, or if it's focused. Then you can use a different, uh, um, a different SVG files to uh, the draw it itself. So as I said, uh, each team has a definition. Uh, a defini in a definition, uh, you define like what are the style. This is mainly colors. That are what are the properties, uh, like uh, the behavior uh, of the uh, widget. Uh, this is mainly like if you want, for example, uh, in the Mac, Mac OS uh, at least, uh, there is a possibility to have the, ta uh, the top bar in the middle which is more normally, and but uh, other environments must have that bar in the left. Yeah. So for the widgets, we, these properties or defining the behavior is exactly uh, this. Uh, so you can define, you can then choose which one for your team is more appropriate. 
And then, of course, the last is the widget look and feel. So, so first, the styles, the colors, which these are mostly defined like background color, text color, border colors, and state colors. In this uh, square, there are all of them are listed, so I just uh, put them inside yeah, if somebody is interested in what exactly uh, is defined there, but there are a lot of them, and uh, you can define them here, which color they use. So for properties, as I said already, the tab alignment, yeah, so if it's tab in the middle of the left, uh, various margins, sizes, and a lot of them are currently hard-coded, but uh, maybe there are one or two which you can actually change, but in the future we can extend this. Uh, and then lastly, you have look, the look and feel. Uh, this is how, how the, 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 the widget is drawn, and uh, as you can see from the example before, that you have, uh, you have to define for the widget, the type, the part, and the state. Um, the type of the widget is defined here. I, I put maybe for, for the reference uh, where, where these uh, all various uh, possibilities are listed uh, inside the source code. You can check it here. And this corresponds to this uh, control type similar to the part, part corresponds to the co uh, control part, and it's in the same uh, enum uh, uh, available. Oops. So a little bit more interested are the, the states. When the states are like, you can have it enabled or disabled. Is it focused? Is it pressed? Is it rolled? Is it selected? Does body, uh, does button value have some, uh, is enabled or uh, does, is it like in the, in the intermediate state or off? And there is an, uh, another extra state which is more like uh, depending on the type of the widget, you can put some extra states inside. So for example, uh, in this one, we have like this uh, checkbox, and it's like enabled. Uh, and if it's enabled, it's drawn like this. And if you have it disabled, and uh, disabled and on, and it's a little bit different. And if you press it, uh, it's drawn differently. So this is all the all the states, and each one corresponds to different. Uh, SVG uh, in the end uh, that it will be drawn. Uh, of course, because you have uh, multiple states, sta states are independent from each other, so you, you can have it more. And uh, there could be that in the de definition you have a situation when more of them. Uh, are uh, valid. Uh, in this case, only the first one is uh, taken. So this is something we uh, we have to be careful. So the most interesting is how the the widgets are drawn. Uh, for this, in the definition, we have a very simple. Simple possibilities like you can draw just a line or you can draw just a rec uh, around a rectangle, but mostly this is if you want to a little bit check uh, which are the bounds of the widget. It's not really uh, good to use it uh, for for actual drawing, but it's just there that you can use it. Uh, mostly, what you want to use it is like the vector definition, so SVG and in this case, you have actually two possibilities. Either SVG, use SVG as an image, or use SVG with special resize algorithm. Uh, use SVG as an image. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, this is like, like you would use the SVG file and import it inside uh, LibreOffice. It will just show, show it. the. A content as it is, so this is used for like radio button 
checkbox and uh, combo box. Combo box is a, a more complex widget which has the, just one of the parts. It is this button with a down arrow. This is the part that is uh, uh, drawn as an image uh, currently. And the, the, the main uh, thing here is that when you resize it uh, or something, that you should keep the, the same proportions. Or it's, it, you don't want to resize it at all. Uh, or only what you want to resize it is if you have a H, uh, high DPI, then you do it double the size or the size by some proportional. So, so the next is like SVG with special resizing. The problem here is that when when we when we want to resize uh, an SVG normally, this means that it will proportionally resize it, and this is not really good for uh, widgets. We want to uh, if. If you just look at this example, I don't know if it's uh, visible, but if you resize it one square and then resize it uh, uh, in just one dimension, then the lines become uh, uh, some some lines are become uh, become uh, bigger and some are like just smaller. Um, just doesn't look right and it's not not uh, nicely rounded anymore. Uh, so, so to overcome this, uh, we have to specially treat uh, some uh, SVGs that they are uh, resized properly. And the algorithm is pretty simple here: that you just take it uh, the half from one dimension, the half of the widget, and what is the, on the right side of the widget, you just apply some uh, uh, delta uh, size. Uh, and then you do the same for the for the other dimension, and then you don't have these problems anymore because you don't proportionally resize it. You resize it so that it keeps the uh, the keeps the shape of uh, the the widget itself. So how I. Did it is that I had to just uh, reuse the SVG IO as a parser and uh, just took an uh, uh, SVG uh, subset uh, which will work for for these kinds uh, which we which are actually needed and then I changed a little bit the parser so that it uh, has this visitor pattern but uh, it's only used for the code for uh, this uh, SVG uh, resizing of the widgets. Uh, maybe later we could uh, change it so that um, all SVG IO uses the visitor pattern, but this is not currently done yet. Uh, and after that, uh, we create like these uh, draw commands. And draw commands is just simple, like draw path, draw rectangle. Uh, and apply some uh, properties like which color, which stroke color, which fill color, uh, how much opacity to it, and maybe soon we will add the gradient uh, uh, support, so this will be possible to have gradients. And uh, yeah. What, what's very important here is then also the performance and uh, how, how we cache it, these things when we uh, uh, write it. Uh, because when you are writing on the user interface uh, elements, these are quite repetitive. You have a lot of same elements just shifted uh, inside the dialog, like for example, four, three or four combo boxes, uh, three or four check boxes, one and another. And these are many. The same, the same element. You just have to shift it, uh, uh, and this is quite, quite easy to cache. So, for SVGs as uh, image uh, elements, we just cache the, we, we we draw it to a bitmap and cache that, and we have the bitmap and just draw it at the correct positions. Um, 
and uh, for the for the SVG elements that with this special resizing we have the draw commands itself, like how, how they are drawn, and we just have to cache the draw, com draw commands. We don't have to parse again the SVG. We just do it one time and then just have the draw commands. We just goes down the the, the list and draws inside. Uh, uh, VCL itself, and it's quite fast. It's no problem. What we, what we have to change is I'll just the position uh, where where to place them. And yes, this is more or less what I have. Maybe a little recap for so for the custom team for the iOS. This is the position. This is the location. You can check it out, see how it works. Maybe you can. Uh, Maybe you can play around and change the uh, the, the look and feel for it. Um, so, and then the team definition. This is something that should be for the uh, designer easy to change. The, we have like this main main team definition is written in an XML file, and then we have the SVG files of the widgets, uh, and then what is still important is like the color styles and parameters and you define inside the, the definition and you're generally done. Okay, thank you.